Imagine being able to move 50 pounds, 100 pounds, or even more with just a little tap, tap, tap a of the finger. That's the magic of air bearings. Today we're going to talk about air bearings, which seem like magic in their ability to produce friction-free movement. And we'll get into how they work and show a few examples. We'll also talk about a few of the things that we did really wrong and cost us a lot of time. We'll show you what we fixed and how we eventually got it to work correctly. Spoiler alert, we followed the instructions, which we finally read. Anyway, we'll go through all of this and show you how to set up air bearings correctly so that hopefully when you do it, you don't have to go through the same heartache that we did. This is an air bearing. They actually come in a lot of shapes and sizes, but this one is called a flat round air bearing, specifically of the porous media variety. That means the air exits millions of submicron pores evenly distributed across a carbon face. The other type of air bearing is called an orifice bearing, but today we're just looking at the porous media kind. For more details about these bearings, you can check out the accompanying article we wrote. Okay, I mentioned mistakes that we made. The first one was underestimating how flat the guide surface needed to be. It needs to be flat, like really super flat. New Way Air Bearings, the company that makes these, recommended a flatness of four hundred thousandths of an inch with a surface finish of 16 RMS. So we're basically talking granite blocks, glass, ceramic, or precision ground metal for the guide surface. The next mistake we made was mounting the bearings so that their surfaces were all perfectly planar with one another. See these standoffs? Yeah, we didn't have those at first. The bearings were just mounted directly to the plate. We learned that these bearing faces are hugely sensitive to planarity. Luckily, New Way sells these flex mounts that allow each bearing to pivot just a little, we'll get to that next, and come into planarity with each other. Back to the standoffs. Looks like some sort of swivel mount, right? Wrong. And I know that because I tried swiveling it and this happened. Turns out these flex mounts use the elastic deformation of thin ribs of the material to provide just a small amount of flexure, maybe five to ten thousandths of an inch or so. So your bearings need to be mounted pretty planar to start with, which honestly shouldn't be a problem in most applications. Just don't use them as fidget spinners. While we're on the subject, the hose fittings on the 25 millimeter flat round bearings, that's their smallest size, were pretty small and we ended up breaking one trying to get our tubing on. We were really good at breaking things on this project. Luckily, New Way was equally good at sending us replacements. We tested two styles of air bearings, VPL, which stands for vacuum preloaded, and flat round bearings. The big difference is the VPL bearings incorporate vacuum, again, see our article for more details, and the flat round bearings don't. Because of this, the flat round bearings, although a smaller footprint, can actually carry higher payloads. One thing we noticed about the flex mounts for the flat round bearings is that, for the small 25mm at least, they don't actually attach to the bearing. These mounts actually do swivel, but there is nothing except gravity and the payload holding them onto the bearings. Once they're set up, they work spectacularly, just something to be aware of as it caught us off guard at first and we thought we were missing something. We weren't, that's just how they are. It's important to note that New Way has a very thorough design guide that had we read in the beginning, would have prevented us from making all of these mistakes. These blunders were entirely our own fault. Nevertheless, the support rep at New Way was truly wonderful, helping us through all of these issues, even though I'm sure he thought we were a hot mess. So to recap, air bearings feel like magic once they're set up correctly. The key takeaways to doing so are one, make sure you have a really flat surface, 
Two, make sure your bearing faces are planar with each other. And three, it's probably a good idea to read the documentation or at a minimum, have your design reviewed by one of New Way's application engineers. Anyway, we now have a new tool in our belt, learned a lot about how to use it, and we hope this video will help do the same for you. Special thanks to New Way Air Bearings for their support on this project. Their team was truly wonderful to work with, responsive, knowledgeable, and patient. Does your team need help integrating air bearings? Would you benefit from custom test fixtures, equipment, or automation in your R&D or manufacturing environments? Pipeline can help you. See examples of our work and reach out to us today at www.teampipeline.us.